Hey folks, Lihari here. Today we're reacting to now loading dot 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 by Scott the Waz. Um, excited to react to another Scott the Waz video. This will be the first gaming video I come back to. Um, I don't like. I'm guessing it's about games that take a while to load. Or no, let's find out. Hey y'all. Hey. Man, I love video games. Oh, it's loading. Just an experience you can't get anywhere else. Is that the DMV? Good things come to those who wait, like a diagnosis. Thank God, now I know. And video games are no different. I mean, have you ever played one? Half the time you're not. Loading screens, because damn, this is easy to research. Done. It's something we're all used to at this point. It's honestly weirder if a game doesn't have a loading screen. You freak. Loading wasn't very common in the early days of gaming, primarily due to the use of cartridges. See, when we plug this in, the console doesn't really need to load up anything. The game is here in its entirety, and it connects directly to the console like a puzzle piece. You didn't have a laser reading a spinning disk, scanning data to load into the system. Everything you could possibly need from this video game is right here here and the console can read and display it all almost instantaneously definitely helped how simple games were back then i mean like oh wow this game has loading screens and this game doesn't and cartridge games did have to load things you just never noticed they rarely stopped you dead in your tracks to announce big things in the works yeah. which made the cartridge games that did just come off as pretentious look at me i'm a big game with lots to load you're mickey fucking mania a handful of cartridge games did feature visible loading game. screens which like okay batman forever on super nintendo just tells you to hold on why this is on screen for like two seconds if you didn't put anything here i wouldn't know it was even loading what if they didn't put this here were they afraid they were gonna lose you well this is just fucking ridiculous street fighter alpha yeah, 2 TV doesn't bro. ever say it's loading but i'm not dumb at least fatal yeah. fury on super nintendo had the guts to admit it but hey these are unique situations. Obviously, when the system's being pushed to its limit, some funny things are gonna happen. D yeah, okay, fucking hilarious. But with other formats, loading was far more commonplace. You got it with floppy disks, cassettes, and man, when you saw that loading screen, it was the exact same as any other loading screen. Not really a ton to geek out to here. I mean, if somebody asks you what your favorite classic loading screen is. Why are we having this conversation? And my lord, you really needed something back then. With computer systems like the Commodore 64, loading could take minutes. And what did you get for it? Epilepsy. Thankfully, there were yeah. fast loaders to help. I played some MS DOS games and stuff like when I was younger for fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm weird. Anyways, um, and like some of the loading screens are so weird. I don't like it. Like, I don't like all the colors. It's really annoying. I like the like, like the Dragon Ball Z games had really good loading screens. That's not that's notable for y'all. Speed the computer up. Some in particular included it. Not for MS DOS, but like for PS2 and stuff that i actually played mini games you could play while the full game was loading like the space invaders want to be which is ingenious so damn ingenious namco did the same thing on ridge racer for the playstation one and then filed a patent for mini games and loading screens to ensure we would never get anything like this ever again how did this give them any competitive edge damn i want to play swampy's revenge but what am i going to do when i'm not playing swampy's revenge see with ridge racer i don't have these problems Ridge Racer finally gets a point. This has brought us to the dawn of the modern loading screen. The PlayStation 1 era, when loading became a standard you just came to expect from most games. But not every game. Loading was at the forefront of the cartridges versus CDs debate. The PlayStation could house games with large file sizes, full motion video, voice acting, these huge worlds to explore, all at the cost of the load times. While the Nintendo right. 64 liked all of that for the sake of quicker loading. Guess who won? Thank God I saved 30 seconds on the load times, and now my life can suck quicker. Turns out nobody cared if they had to wait for a game to load, and the battle between the PS1 and N64 proved that. I mean, here are games that had loading screens on PlayStation compared to the games that didn't have loading screens on Nintendo 64.
Of course, now that there was no escaping load times, some developers decided to get creative with them. Obviously, Ridge Racer is an example of that, featuring a bite-sized version of Galaxian to play while waiting, which obviously opened up a world of loading screen possibilities. Fucking oh. patents, man. Now, over the years, we have gotten some interactive loading screens, like Test Drive on PS2 and Xbox. We got Pong! Now, wait a second. Why were they able to do this when Namco had this concept patented? Same way you can legally murder. Don't get caught. I assume this just wasn't on their radar or they didn't care the delivery. that much. I mean, how much did Namco really utilize their patent here? Well, look no further than Tekken 5. Jesus Christ! How do we go from like 12 pixels to more than 12 pixels? This yeah. loading screen is based on the arcade game Starblade. And it's amazing to see how far Namco loading screens have come. It's crazy. They went from singular to plural. Yeah, the Tekken and Ridge Racer games are some of the only major examples from them, which, man, for a developer with such a rich arcade history, you'd think it'd be the easiest thing in the world to throw any of these bastards on a loading screen. Hell, on PS1 alone, you could have had a little mini Pac-Man game while Pac-Man World loaded. Easy, but so no. Cool. I mean, why bother when you own the pen? Not like there's any competition. Not like there's any competition. Thankfully, this patent expired in 2015. Now, I don't know how much it was genuinely enforced over the years, but regardless, we can rejoice. Video game loading screens can finally be fun! Hey. Uh oh. Huh. Fun sucks. Hey now, let's be fair. We've had some pretty great ones over the years. One that immediately comes to mind is Splatoon on Wii U. Uh, when you're waiting for the online match to start, you can play Squid Jump down on the gamepad. Yeah, that's so Honestly, cool. Honestly, one of the best uses of the dual screens of the Wii U. It almost makes the investment worth it, almost. Especially considering Splatoon 2 just lets you dick around with the music and Splatoon 3 just has you practice the actual game. Boo. Boo. That's practical, I don't want practical. want jokes. But I, I can't deny real? how smart practice rooms are as loading screens. Uh, like with the Bayonetta games, you have an opportunity to try out some combos this or discover good. brand new ones. Or the Assassin's this Creed games, which are the game. exact same thing, but now including the addition of nothing to do. Just run around and avoid. That's all I need. Which explains- When I played like Assassin's Creed 1 and 2, I never really got past that. Um, th th I won't lie. The those loading screens were kind of kind of went hard. I I don't know why. I was like fourteen. They like really piqued my childish imagination. We all. Explains why I'm malnourished. Oh it God, makes it's... sense in the context of the franchise. You're transported into the lives of your ancestors. The environment has to load up, not only in the game, yeah. but the story as well. <laughs> it gives you something to do, that's for damn sure. I mean, Rayman Origins and Legends both let you do similar things oh, with these stage aren't loading. It just gives you a chance to play the game before you play the game. A little taste, you know? Get your bearings on the controls, the feel of the character. I mean, it isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but these three examples showcase how loading screens can actually enhance the gameplay that follows. Four examples. You ever just sitting there with these static-ass screens and then when the game starts, you're not ready. Oh, no, I damn it. Why do I play with butter to pass the time? These ensure you're prepared for anything. How about an ulcer? Bad loading screens. What makes one so abysmal? I'll tell you later. Why do the games with the longest load times have nothing to do during them? Lego City Undercover. Boot the game up, you get this spinning police badge for nearly a minute, title screen, and then... Welcome back, old friend. No what, way. the title screen took this long to load? And you couldn't at least have a progress bar or something? Probably not. That would have frustrated me more seeing how slow it is visualized. But that's, that's the Wii U version. On the other consoles, we get a different loading screen and faster load times. A good one. Faster is faster. We can move this 3D model of a Lego set around, which... I mean, this isn't great, but lord, it's better than the original. If you stare at this long enough, you will go insane. Now, does that make Half-Life 2's better?
These ones are just weird, man. How they just freeze the game randomly to load? And not like this happens before or after a cutscene or during a time in which it makes sense for the game to fade to black and take a second to load. And nah, it's just, hey, I know you're in the middle of playing, but check this out. This kind of same energy, does hey, it, right? Fuck you, look at this bag. Okay. Of course, I understand why Half Life 2 does what Half Life 2 is. We're playing in a massive world here, especially for 2004. Sure, it's awkward, but to an extent, I respect them for just telling it how it is. Not trying to hide anything. Yeah, we're loading. What of it? That's something loads of games refuse to do, opting to mask these screens in ways that feel natural to the players so they don't notice. Oh, yeah, I don't notice. Getting harder to find a modern game these days that doesn't feature squeezing through a crack for 10 seconds. And because of that, it's easy to point at this and claim that this is all to mask loading screens. Now, what's my source? Uh, common sense. I mean, why the hell else would these characters be squeezing through cracks? Because they mean, have to? No, no, no. It's obviously because they're trying yeah. to hide something. They're Very rarely it's like with me. And they dare f their customer? I found that once people notice something's a thing, they all of a sudden need to have a stance on it. Like, are these really that annoying or annoying in the slightest? Ugh, another hidden load screen masked by this incredibly natural part of the level design that I only found out hides loading screens once every game started to do it. Do these even hide loading screens? Some yeah, like, like, sometimes it's artistic, sometimes, like, it's like well integrated and not that long. Sometimes it, it like it takes forever, and that that's kind of that, that doesn't feel great. I I like the the take here. Developers have come out to say these are here for design purposes to funnel the player in a particular direction while naturally stopping them from going backwards. Which I mean, sure, the game is loading stuff during this segment. Could be a lot, could be a little, but to claim this is just a hidden load screen, yeah. it's not fair. Most of the time, when these pop up, it's to aid the level design first and foremost. And if these really get on your nerves, well, damn, I'd like to see what else pisses you off. Fingers. Whenever I hear arguments about these, they're often called pace breakers, but I don't get that at all. When are you in the middle of action and it just hard cuts to this? These almost always occur during a pretty quiet walking segment. And if this is a pace breaker, I don't want to know what this is. It's easy to blame the games themselves for bad load times, but hey, it's not always their fault. Let's take a look at the Neo Geo CD, a console with such horrendous load times, they put out a revision with the sole purpose of just fixing that. The Neo Geo CD Z. It's just the Neo Geo CD, but now with faster loading. I never said fast loading. These early CD-based consoles had it pretty rough. I mean, it takes minutes upon minutes to boot games up, and for what? Gorgeous. Ah. Worth the wait. But what yeah, game has I went the hard. worst? <laughs> low times. The one that immediately comes to mind is Nintendo Badge Arcade on the Nintendo 3DS, a free download that would offer icons to decorate your home screen, you pay for credits to nab them with a crane game with new badges being added via consistent updates, so there's a lot going on here. You gotta load up the app, connect to the internet, and the 3DS menu is heavily involved here doing something it was never designed to do, so there's tons of reasons this takes a while to boot up. 10 minutes of reasons. Jesus, that makes Grand Theft Auto 5s look like a blink and you miss it moment. Well, if the blink turns into a nap. Back when it launched on the Xbox 360, GTA 5 would take like three minutes to boot up, which a few re-releases later, here on the PlayStation 5, it takes still pretty damn long for an Xbox 360 yeah. game on PlayStation 5. Well, uh, And like, I don't know if you ever played it on PC. I think Scott the Wands doesn't play games on PC. And I think they fix this later on, but like there was a time period where like even if you had like amazing hard drive, um, it would take like five minutes or whatever, or like longer. And like then you would get into another loading screen to actually go into like online and like that was so frustrating when I played. An Xbox 360 game on Xbox 360. Sonic the Hedgehog from 2006. Here, watch this. Infamous. You've just experienced a third of Sonic 06. Load screens genuinely make up such a huge percentage of this game's runtime. 
You talk to a character to start a mission. Loading screen. The character tells you something. Loading screen. Here's the mission. Loading screen. The character thanks you. Loading screen. And you know what the craziest thing is? This shit boots up instantly. That's like a four second load and then here's the title yeah, screen. Wow. Which then plays this huge cutscene. Yet it has to load Robert telling me to put my damn shoes on. It just makes me want to play a good game. Th th like Bloodborne. This is the worst loading screen. Like, look at this. What the hell is this? It's the logo on black. That's it. And with how difficult the game is, you're gonna die a lot and see this pop up every single time for a minute and a half straight. I'll hand it to Sonic 06. Wow. What's more interesting to look at here? Silver the Hedgehog or nothing? Damn, give me a minute. Listen, I can deal with frequent load times. I can deal with long load times. I can deal with nothing to do or look at during load times. But when I have to deal with more than one of these at a time, that's what makes for the worst loading screens. GTA 5 is easy to forgive considering you have one long boot up and then practically no load times during the actual game. But then with something like Animal Crossing New Horizons, there's this long ass wait at the start, an unstoppable dialogue sequence, another wait, and then when we get into the actual game, we still have these clunky ass loads when entering buildings. What exactly are we loading here? Dude. Loading yeah, I played that with my little sister a lot. Um, I didn't, never really got to an Animal Crossing, but it is insane how long those load times are. Oh my god. It'd be like, it's like 10 p.m. It's about, it's like her vent time, and she just wants to do one little thing, and it's like, fine, fine, I'll let you do that one little thing. 10 minutes later, because we were in loading screens for 8 minutes straight. I, I feel bad for her. Screens can be the worst things ever. But are there any that are truly the best? Even some of the coolest ones out there, they're kind of just making the most out of a bad situation. Look up best loading screens of all time and tell me, do they elicit a hanker? Skyrim lets me move a 3D model around sluggishly. Cool. Well, hot damn, at that point, this is the true loading screen. Resident Evil's ominous opening door really added to the survival horror experience. The genuine fear of what's on the other side just made 10 times more effective by how slow it was. This is a loading screen that enhanced the game. Until after you've seen it for the 40th time, it kind of loses its luster. Oh God, what's on the other side? It's drywall. Tips and tricks, yeah, that's a pretty easy way to use up this time, but I don't think I ever learned a damn thing from these. Any tip and or trick on these things is surface level knowledge. That's just like, I have. wow, the more you know. That's like cute ones like these games. Dragon Ball titles, Okami's Paw Prince, Devil May Cry 3's Assault Charges. Hey, I respect the hell yes, out of these. This one They're was so cool. cool. But that's the farthest they ever go. If I had the choice between no loading screens and loading screens with funny pictures on them, hmm, would I rather wait or not? Like, I know I sound like the last guy you'd want to hang out with by siding with the former, but I'm sorry, I like these, but let's so be cool. honest here. Nowadays, as loading screens become less and less frequent and intrusive with the evolution of technology, anybody that says how they miss loading screens, I just have to respond with, Really? Yeah. It's like saying you miss instruction manuals or game magazines or video rental stores. I have some great memories with these things, but do you truly miss them? If they are brought back, are you genuinely going to utilize them? Or are you just going to think it's neat? Because with the release of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles, SSD storage became a standard for video games, making low times... Well, not extinct, but so damn fast, there's really no point to doing anything special with these screens anymore. And listen, I'd love to give some poetic statement on how we lost something with the death of unique loading screens, but how many games were doing them to begin with? Most didn't care, like, look at this. And the ones that did care to put something here, it says more about the developers and their passion to make the most out of the cards they're dealt with like than it does about the validity of loading screens. The screens aren't what's special here. It's what the developers decided to do with them. Yeah. Hey, this is a good one. Scott here. Loading screens are the only Hi. thing that stands between me and happiness. We spent decades complaining about them and now that they're not as common, you know people are out there saying, damn, I miss loading screens. Why? <laughs> people love to bitch. For example. Huh?
Oh. Hey. Hey, won't lie. That ending went hard. I keep saying went hard. That's like my new catchphrase, I swear. But um, that, I really like Scott the Waz videos. I feel like they're like, like you can tell like they're kind of catered to like a casual audience. But like they, they, they do a good job. There's some good jokes. There's some good bits. He has some nice like topics. He's funny, charismatic, for real. I'm a fan. <laughs> that delay between hey all and Scott here is going to fuck up all those hey all. Every hey all Scott here at the same time videos. That's so real. That's so unlucky. But high key though, kind of this. That bastard Scott made me think my phone was loading for no reason. SMH. Yeah, I kind of got a little like spooked out at the beginning of the video. I just like the fact Scott chose to delay after saying, hey all. One of the best things I've heard from him. <laughs> I mean, okay. Okay. Honestly, love the implication. This entire video is just a loading screen with care put into it. Wait. Am I? I thought there was only the first. Am I missing something? Anyways, as someone who has gone out of the way to collect original game manuals for Half-Life and its expansions, do, 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 I do in fact miss game manuals. Okay, yeah, I mean game manuals are fucking cool. Um, I remember like reading those and going home from the video game store, which coincidentally I don't go to the game store anymore, so probably they don't exist as much, but like, still, good memories. Um, the episode officially starts at 1651 when Scott says start here. Scott here. Scott here. Loading screens are the only thing that stands between me Oh, wait, and I happiness. missed the joke. We spent decades complaining about them, and now that they're not as common... I mean, my fault. You know what? Hats off. He, like, completely smirked hey, my peak. I didn't even realize. Man, I love... Yeah, he didn't say the thing. I mean, I am the worst reactor. Oh my god, that's insane. My fault. My fault. I'm sorry. You probably were so disappointed in me. I'm disappointed in myself. Let it be. Let, let's be clear. <laughs> the butter and meta loading jokes killed me. This is a special upload. It was a good one. This was a good video. Okay. Well, I have one more to react to tonight. So I better finish this video because. I feel really weird when I, like, can't compel myself to stop, like, yawning a little bit during a video. And I did that, like, twice during this one, and it was only 18 minutes. So, uh, we, we don't talk about it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, folks. I hope you have a great rest of your night, or day, or evening, or I said night because it's 2 a.m. for me, but 3 a.m. for me. But, <laughs> see you. Bye. <laughs> Hey folks, thank you for watching the video. Remember to like it, follow on YouTube, subscribe on Twitch, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.